sponsored by Private Internet Access. For hundreds of years, humans have been hauling cargo around the planet in a global web of trade. Natural resources shipped from every corner of the planet. Diamonds from Russia, spices from India, iPhones from China. But in the last two centuries, how we transport cargo has gone through a monumental revolution. Incredible new machines allow us to fly, sail and drive ourselves around every corner of the planet and back in a fraction of the time it took before. And at the heart of this technological revolution, a single resource, crude oil, fueling trillions of dollars of cars, ships, planes and other vehicles every single day. However, after decades of research on its effects on the environment, scientists aren't very keen. As a result, the transport industry is going through another revolution. Clean energy is in, and there are a few options. Biofuel, electric, natural gas, even propane. Oh, but some were convinced that there was another answer. Hydrogen. And they had a cutting-edge hydrogen cell battery to prove it. Nikola Motors had plans for it all. Pickup trucks, jet skis, off-road buggies. But their crowning achievement wasn't any of that. It was their cutting-edge hydrogen-powered semi-trucks. They just had to build the fueling stations, and they were good to go. It was going to be massive. The next evolution of transport was here, and it was at Nikola Motors. The year is 2014, and a man named Trevor Milton is looking to start a new business. Now, Trevor is armed to the teeth with business experience. He'd previously founded three massively successful companies, an alarm company he'd sold for $2 million just after leaving college, an online sales site similar to eBay, where he was seeing upwards of 80 million users per month, and Dehybrid, a company that retrofitted trucks to run on natural gas, which he'd just sold for $16 million. At 32 years of age, Trevor's doing all right, but he wasn't done with business just yet. Trevor looks around. He sees that green energy motor companies like Tesla are actually starting to look viable. He thinks the future is green, and he wants a piece of the pie. So he plans to build another green trucking company. However, this time, he wouldn't just be converting trucks, he'd be making them from the ground up. He just needed a name. And in 2015, Nikola Motors was born. He gets to work on the designs immediately, and after countless nights of work, Trevor's first design is finally finished. The Nikola One. After reaching a massive breakthrough in hydrogen technology in 2016, they'd created the world's first hydrogen electric semi. Designed by Trevor himself, in his own basement, he arranges a convention where he debuts a fully working Nikola One on stage. People are impressed. Two other Nikola trucks are announced shortly after. People are more impressed. Okay, so Nikola has a few trucks, but what was their actual business plan? Simple. Step one. They acquire, design and pattern all of their own cutting-edge tech. Step 2. They manufacture their trucks in-house at their own factory, currently under construction in Arizona, and sell the fleets of trucks off to buyers. Step 3. Profit. However, the profits weren't coming from the trucks. They were coming from the fueling of the trucks. Here's how it worked. They'd also build over 700 hydrogen stations around the US. Here, they'd use solar energy and wind farming to cheaply electrolyze water into hydrogen, then store it in fuel cells for incoming trucks. The sales, servicing and repairs of the trucks wouldn't cost buyers a thing, but Nikola would charge them $1 for every mile they drove. If they could just sell a few fleets of their trucks, buyers would have to rely on Nikola's fueling stations indefinitely, guaranteeing Nikola a stable cash flow for years to come. It was bulletproof. They just needed to get a few major corporations on board which they did in droves. Beer conglomerate Anheuser-Busch places an 800 truck pre-order. German manufacturing giant Bosch agrees to supply them with battery tech. Iveco also agrees to help with components. The following months see a few new vehicles announced, including a pickup truck and a buggy. But in November of 2019, Nikola has an electric battery breakthrough. This was the big one. Two times the charge, 800 mile ranges, 50% cost reductions. Some bold statements were made, and naturally, people were skeptical, but the tech was 100% real. Trevor had seen it with his very own eyes. Nikola had the technology, the partnerships, and the business plan. Now they just needed the money.
early 2020. Tesla's stock has just quadrupled in under a year, and other EV companies are also heating up. Retail traders were ravenous. So in March, Nikola announces they're going public through a reverse merger, giving investors a chance to buy into the company early. Now they just needed to create some hype. But there was a problem. Being a company that was still in the development phase, Nikola doesn't really have that much to show off. So they load up Blender and get to work. They slap together some 3D renders and put them on their website, which people log on to immediately. My god, the renders looked incredible. It was clear, it was time to go all in. And shares end up tripling in value weeks before the merge is even set to happen. Retail was dribbling with excitement. But finally, on June the 3rd, Nikola merges and goes public. And people go crazy. They buy all the shares they can stomach. That, combined with certain other market factors, pumps Nikola to a valuation of $34 billion within two days of being public, making it worth more than Ford Motors. And with $700 million now in the bank from the merger, Nikola was set. Trevor had assembled one of the best teams in the world and valued at more than $30 billion. Nice. It's fair to say that he had the full faith of the market behind him. However, the pompous valuation blasted Nikola into the public eye, and some eyebrows were immediately raised. For starters, the company didn't currently have any source of revenue. In fact, they'd made just $36,000 in the third quarter of 2020, and that was from installing solar panels for Trevor. They'd claimed to have revolutionary battery tech, but were suddenly outsourcing battery tech from companies like Bosch. Kathy Wood, a well-known hedge fund manager, basically says their entire business plan is completely fucked. Had retail missed something? Investors become uncertain, and a rocky wave of sell-offs hit the stock. In fact, the company's valuation halves in just over a month. Things were not looking good. Was Nikola a fraud? But just as the sell-off settles, something incredible happens. On the 8th of September, negotiations of a $2 billion deal with General Motors are announced. Investors rejoice immediately. If anyone was going to do their due diligence, it was one of America's most prestigious motor companies. Someone as big as GM would surely vet the company they're dealing with before announcing a deal with them worldwide. Investors were immediately reconvinced, and shares of both companies saw. This was it. Trevor had done it. Nikola was real, and they were the future. Before we move on, the internet. An almost endless source of riveting entertainment, and home to an unimaginable wealth of knowledge. It's incredible. However, it's not all good. Turns out there are other people on this internet, and some of them want your data. Share an unsecure internet connection with any of these people, and your online activity all swiped in an instant. My god, he's got everything. Or does he? With private internet access, you can lock your internet down under an encrypted connection, located almost anywhere in the world, meaning that when a hacker tries tracking your device, to them, you're now in Venezuela. Also, your online activity is virtually invisible and untouchable. Just open up private internet access and click a server. But there's more. Access to geo-restricted content, including content on Netflix, YouTube, and other social media networks, better deals online, play games blocked in your region, and protect your identity by keeping your data fully encrypted. Not enough? How about a strict no-log policy? A 30-day money-back guarantee? One subscription covering 10 devices at once? CNET says yes. PC Mac has said yes five years in a row. Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, whatever you're on, you'll be set. And you can get private internet access for 77% off through the links in the description and the pinned comment below. That's $2.59 a month, plus three months free of charge. Start protecting yourself today. So it looked like Nikola was in fact legit. Investors pour back into the stock, and this time, they're riding it out for the long run. Nikola truly was the future of logistics. However, this post-deal optimism would be short-lived. A few months prior to GM negotiations, a short-selling research firm called Hindenburg had heard about Nikola and their groundbreaking tech. They weren't convinced, so they start doing a little digging. 
They start by interviewing some of Trevor's ex-employees, and they hear some interesting allegations. According to ex-employees, Trevor's old companies weren't quite as successful as he'd previously made out. In 2004, Trevor partnered up with a friend to create a door-to-door -door sales business, selling security systems in Utah. He ends up selling the company two years later, for around 850k, with 300k paid up front. It was a done deal, and everything went through fine. Until the buyer finds out the company was a complete lie, and demands Trevor takes it back. Trevor does, and the buyer takes a 300k loss. Trevor then sells the business for a second time, this time without any issues. However, allegedly, he doesn't tell his business partner and stashes the second paycheck for himself. In July of 2009, Trevor launches upillar.com, an eBay-type website where you could post classified ads to sell stuff online. Trevor says that it goes amazingly, quickly reaching 80 million users a month and even beating Amazon in numbers. In reality, this wasn't the case. In fact, ex-employees of Upillar say they had so little to do while working there they spent most of their time just approving ads. It wasn't long before Upillar was shut down. Trevor claims it was because the company was growing too fast. That was a lesson for me as I, um, at that time was not to grow too fast and it really kicked our butt and we shut down the company, lost everything. In November 2009, Trevor tries again. This time he launches Dehybrid, a company that would convert trucks to partly run on natural gas. It goes well and he secures a $16 million contract to convert 800 trucks. The buyer puts in $2 million for a 10% ownership of Dehybrid and asks them to convert 10 trucks up front before fully committing to an 800 truck deal. Easy enough. However, issues arise quickly. See, Dehybrid has a little bit of trouble actually converting the trucks due to the fact their tech wasn't actually finished, but they give it a good crack nonetheless. A few weeks later, and they actually do manage to convert five trucks, However, those trucks didn't work too well. They're sued immediately. Okay, this was not good. Capital's drying up, and Dehybrid is in desperate need of some more. So Trevor searches for new investors, and he gets desperate. He tells potential investors that Dehybrid's previous deal was actually worth $250 million, and that they'd save buyers of their gas turbines almost 40% of fuel costs. In reality, that number was closer to 20%, but that didn't matter. Eventually, a company called Sustainable Power Group like what they hear and enter negotiations. Perfect. A few months in and the deal is close to being finalised, but Sustainable Power Group back out at the last minute, having found out that Dehybrid hadn't even completed development of the gas system they were trying to sell, nor had the legal certifications to actually sell them. They also sue. <sighs> okay, let's try again. This time we'll add a chief technical officer to the pitch to look more professional. Uh, one problem. We don't have one. Not an issue. Trevor then proceeds to bring a random man into investor meetings, claiming he was their chief technical officer. <coughs> Damn, still no luck. Right, clearly none of this was working. Time for another approach. In 2012, Trevor registers Dehybrid Systems, a totally new, completely unrelated business. And in 2014, Trevor finally manages to sell the company, bagging $16 million. It was finally over. But in 2015, Trevor steps back in the ring and establishes Nikola Motors. The issues start almost immediately. December 2016, the Nikola One is showcased to the world for the first time. The truck on stage was a fully functioning prototype of the world's first viable hydrogen electric semi-truck. However, an ex-Nikola employee disagrees. According to him, the truck on stage wasn't even fitted with hydrogen tech at the time, but natural gas turbines from an earlier version, even though it still had hydrogen written on the side. There were also no gears or motors in the truck, and apparently the truck wasn't even running on its own battery, but an electric cable coming out of a panel in the floor. Okay, so the truck on stage didn't work then, but they'd obviously get the truck to run eventually, right? Well, turns out that's a bit more difficult than previously thought. Around a year later, and Nicola is still struggling to get the thing moving. But on January the 25th, they drop a video. And they'd finally done it. A video of the Nicola 1 actually driving. It was incredible. But Hindenburg still wasn't convinced. 
so they send a guy over to the road they'd recorded the video on. He realizes something strange. In the video, it looks like a flat, even road. But in real life, it was a massively inclined hill. Did they just roll the truck down a hill and angle the camera? Nicola responds to the allegation immediately. Yes, yes we did. According to another ex-employee, the truck's development was abandoned straight after its reveal and isn't functional to this day. Okay, that's not great, but at least the Nicola 2 seems to work. And according to Trevor, all major components are made in-house. At least they have some working tech. Wait, is that a third-party component with some tape just slapped over the logo? It was evident that the trucks had a few issues. November 2017 Elon Musk has just announced that he's stepping into the game and reveals a prototype of Tesla's very own semi-truck. Trevor retreats to his basement. This was not good. Wait, hold on a second. That truck looks oddly familiar. Had they stolen the patented design of the Nikola 1? Nikola conjures a lawsuit immediately. They sue Tesla for $2 billion, alleging that Tesla's semi looked substantially like Nikola's truck and leading to potential issues like customer confusion and damage to the Nikola brand. Tesla denies the allegations vehemently, no! but Nikola is adamant. Two years later, and the lawsuit sees little progression. However, in September 2020, a bombshell drops. Trevor Milton had lied? Turns out that the Nikola 1's patented truck design wasn't even created by Nikola. In fact, after doing a little digging, the Financial Times find out that Nikola had actually bought the design off a Croatian man a few years prior, making Trevor's claims about designing it himself in his basement not only very sad, but also potentially voiding the truck's patent entirely. In November 2019, Nikola announced their breakthrough electric battery. It was revolutionary. And the best part of all, Trevor would even share it with the competition. For the greater good. Again, Hindenburg weren't too convinced. So they hit up some DMs. Turns out that back in mid-2019, Nikola was in the market for a little bit of proprietary battery technology. Around the same time, a small company in England claimed they've cracked a battery that can be charged in just 5 minutes. Sounds interesting. So Nikola begins talks with them. They tell Nikola that they expect to be seeing annual revenues of up to $4 billion by 2024. Nikola likes what they hear, so they offer to acquire them for $50 million worth of Nikola stock. They enter negotiations not long after, and Trevor hops online to flex their breakthrough battery to the world. But hold on, the deal's not actually finished yet, and turns out, things are going downhill quickly. During negotiations, Nikola had sent a guy across the pond to check the company out a bit further, just to make sure they weren't being swindled. Turns out, that's exactly what was happening. The company's battery wasn't even finished, and the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. Also, the company's president of US operations was indicted a few months prior for purchasing prostitutes on NASA's expense account. Nice. But no thank you. The deal was cancelled shortly after, and no battery was purchased. Investors were never updated on the situation. July 2020, a promotional Nikola video comes out on YouTube. In it, Trevor states that he's assembled one of the best teams in the world. Let's dive a little deeper into that. First up, the director of hydrogen production, a pretty key role for a hydrogen trucking company. And it's Trevor Milton's younger brother. Okay, must have some good experience in the field. Wait, construction? Paving driveways? Okay, what about the chief engineer? Also a pretty major job. Previous work? Pinball machine repairman. Uh, okay. Who's the head of infrastructure development? Again, a pretty big role. He's a former general manager of a golf course. Right, I think we've covered enough ground here. And on the 10th of September, just two days after the GM announcement, Hindenburg released their findings. It was hideous. The stock halves again, and GM's $2 billion worth of Nikola stock proposed in the deal falls to $1 billion worth in just two weeks. But it was alright. Trevor wasn't just going to back down. Cowards run, leaders stay in fight, he tweets. Investors were clearly in safe hands. 
but then allegations of sexual assault come out against Trevor. From his cousin. Alright, I'm out boys. Trevor steps down and goes offline. He leaves the company with $3 billion worth of stock. No, this was not happening. Something was wrong. Very, very wrong. The GM deal is proof the company is real, investors said. Well, turns out GM was no longer that keen. And investors were annihilated again. Towards the end of September, a number of finance YouTubers start reporting on the story. Naturally, this involves using some of Nicola's footage. Notably, the video of their truck rolling down a hill. Nicola were furious. They jump on YouTube's copyright system immediately. Thankfully, YouTube's foolproof copyright policies meant that all YouTubers in question were completely safe from any abuse of the system. They never stood a chance. Use any footage of our trucks? Taken down. Clips of Nikola World? Going offline. What's that? Tesla footage that we don't even own the rights to? See you later. By censoring anyone that talked about the company, Nikola had cleared their name from any wrongdoing, and the company's public image was restored for good. Wall Street is no stranger to fraud. From the ex-chairman of the Nasdaq defrauding thousands of people out of almost $70 billion, to startups like Theranos reaching a valuation of over $10 billion without a working product. Fraud is clearly rampant, but executives at Nikola Motors insist they're different. There may be a few hiccups here and there, but big things are still happening. Day-to-day -day operations remain unfolded as directors continue plans, designers render models, and engineers tweak tech. And even though the share price continues to trickle downwards, and scandals hit the company on an almost monthly basis, rest assured, everything at Nikola Motors is absolutely fine. So that, that's, <laughs> is that true? That's delightful. <laughs> Um, you know, what? Is that actually, that actually happened? I th of course it happened. I think, I think this is a reflection of how, like... Don't forget, private internet access is 77% off through the links below. That's $2.59 a month for encrypted connections, unblocked content, added privacy, and more.